Hello, everybody. I gotta update my game and get a drink, and then we'll start. Well, last stream we did some audio stuff and some little issues came up, not even really came up, but were noticed. So for example, we were doing the old C++ habit of having a bunch of things in the mixer that were forward declared. I made this cleanup notes like, why are these pointers? Why are we allocating them? Uh, we certainly don't need to. So at least I don't think so. So let's do the thread in the mutex. Well, let's just search for all of it. Async thread. Hmm. Haven't used the thread stuff in a while. Thread create. Really? We don't have. A thread thing. That doesn't frickin allocate the thread. That's horrible. That is horrible. Okay, we can't. That is not cool. Well, let's call this thread start, right? Or Now, this doesn't start the thread. This, yeah, thread start is a different thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so Okay, we're cleaning things up one at a time. So, oh, we still got this global thread table.
Okay. I was about to delete the return entirely. That would not have been the right thing. Okay, so thread init needs to get this proc. It needs to get all these things. I don't know what I was thinking not passing these arguments. Okay, great. Um, well, let's make sure we still run. That's great. So we still haven't done anything useful. We just factored that, which is fine. The next step will be to no longer allocate the thing. Are I working on other projects besides the compiler engine? And Sokoban. Uh, a little bit, yes, but not that much else. Okay. So the reason we were doing this is uh, we wanted to say thread init async thread. Allocation can't really fail because we have the memory for that. So async thread is just a thread. It's not a pointer to a thread. So the question is, see, look how much code goes away when you do that. And the question is, what happens if we oh instead of deleting async thread though we need to do uh, thread on it so it's not quite that much um, we need to We need to um, I was thinking something and then it just dropped right out of my brain because it's late at night. What oh so when so we used to allocate this thread and say like oh maybe that'll fail. But really, it's the thread start now, not strat. So we call begin thread. X. Okay. Oh, we've still got some badness in here. Okay. All right. So I wish I could know. Wait, what's going on here? Why am I returning? How did that compile? How did I leave all these deletes in here? That would have been bad. Okay. Um, let's 
Let's just search for delete again, just in case. All right, now it's fine. We got them all. That would have been bad and annoying and stupid. Um, so, yeah, so now we're returning bool. I'm not sure I like that. Like, I want to know just, is this thread valid? Let's put an init on it. What the hell? I mean, it's sort of operating system dependent, like what? All right, so so I could use this index and like, is the index greater than zero? But, ah, um, oh, you know, yeah, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> if okay, maybe I made a mess of all that. I don't actually know. We're just, we're just factoring things to be more useful. But that was definitely a thing like conflating thread creation and allocation is supposed to be what this language avoids completely. So the fact that we did that in the library means that that was old enough that this dated back to like before that philosophy had been concretized. So yeah, um, it's just index, not thread index. It's just index. Okay. A thread dot. All right. We still have audio. We still have our audio debugging. That's great. We didn't break anything. In get audio channel names, you're ecstatic about how you can return an array in a Lisp-like language without being spammy. What do you mean by spammy? I mean, so if you were to do the equivalent thing in C++, it's a mess in terms of general heap allocation and messing up your heap. And also the amount of complicated language semantics required to make that fast. Like, you know, you need the concept of move semantics and references and all this stuff. And it's just really ugly. It's just really ugly. How do I have time for all this stuff? I don't really. It's 
I don't. OK. Let's make the mutex also Somebody else might use that mutex. All right. That's gross right there. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, debug draw. Look at all these sound mutex grabs. Oh, we just did this one the other day. It's okay. Great. Okay. So we got rid of another heap allocation that there was no reason to do. Other programs might break <laughs> because of this, but it's fine. Um, okay, third thing. The handler, which is, you know, that's only ever used by the sound player here, and it really shouldn't. Let's just see what compile errors we get. All right, so 869, we certainly don't want to do this. Pass a pointer there. Count buffer bytes. Really just need to do a cleanliness pass on this whole code. Oh, that wasn't in this file. Hey, yay, yay. We don't need to say if handler. That's stupid. Don't delete the handler. That doesn't make any more sense. And we're back to debug draw. Okay, we might be done with that task. Okay. So, that's great.
received a sound data that did not have a full path. What's that, what's that about? Let's bug that later. Um, oh, it's because those were created by the all dot sound tweaks. All right. Uh, yes. Um, Mixer does not allocate its members needlessly and then sync with mixer changes. Okay, that's great. That was a thing that we added to the list that is now crossed off. I don't recommend Commander as a console. It's pretty terrible. Is the left-right audio issue fixed? No, uh, we will probably start looking at that very soon, as in during this stream. Um, I mean, first we should verify for sure that it's happening with a good test sound. Let's not talk about it yet because there's something else I wanted to do that's on this list. And that is from debug draw. I was doing this get string width in pixels thing and I had to put in this 0.6 hack factor. And I'm wondering if this font just has a really wide W or something. Maybe I should use X instead of W, let's see. That W is pretty big. So I had been thinking of it sort of as a fixed width font, but it's not. And so I'm sort of, I'm saying get the width of a W and then use that for however many characters. But if that is so much wider than other things, then it's not a useful metric. So how's this? How is this? Uh, okay, for a non-fixed width font, let's just get the width of a string and divide by the average number of characters to give us some idea, to give us some average character width we can use. Maybe we shouldn't use a non-fixed width font here. Yeah, you know what? This this should be a fixed width font, actually. Because... I mean, we're printing stuff in columns. Oh, I don't know. It's fine. Okay. Because um, we're printing, like, the same things in columns, so it's fine. All right. So test string is going to be hello sailor and get string width in pixels. Test string divided by flow test count. Okay. See, we could have just left this. We made this note during the last string, during last stream, I mean. And a lot of people would just let that be in their code forever. But no, you go, you, you go back to these things and you figure them out and you clean them up. We just didn't want it to derail what we were doing at the time, but that doesn't mean that we don't understand and fix these things. So now we don't need these auto casts because this is float. See, it's okay to be a little bit messy once in a while as long as you decrease the mess when you have the opportunity. All right, so that seems a little better. 
I mean, actually, we want to increase some stuff a little bit, but, uh, yeah. Where was this code? Here we go. So I had decreased some of these before. I think we need more on each of these. Yeah, because we had such a ridiculous width before I had, I had decreased some of those numbers. There we go. That's going to be good for now. All right. That's good. Now we can start looking at this other situation. So oh, this particular list is just the list from the last stream. So the only other item on it is the mono sound thing. There are much longer lists all over the place and I need to consolidate them at some point. Okay. So let me get a file. Oh, you know what we need to do? Okay, we have sound category music here, but we're not actually using it for the music that the game plays. Because as you see this, it's just, this is the music track where it says prop there, it's supposed to say what category of sound it is, and there's nothing being drawn there, which I think means, oh, we just don't draw if it's music. Here. So if we, for some reason, forget, then we'll do that, but we'll say music. So either that was the only problem or we're also not tagging it as music. All right, no, that's there. Okay, great. Great. Why don't we just do this? Then we don't need to do this. Awesome. We used a language feature. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Stereo test sound. I want an actual downloadable sound effect. Left channel, right channel, both channels. Okay. Can I just download these, please? Th 
they don't want to let me download the files. Goodbye. I can make my own stereo test in like two minutes, but. Yeah, whatever. We're just going to make one because everybody's stupid. All right. So in the left channel, we'll, we'll even use some of our existing things. Uh, let's put a music track in the left channel. How do I select one? Oh, there we go. Okay. So there's music in the left channel and uh, let's get something from witness. These hearts. There we go. Wait, which Sally? There we go. Put it up here. All right, so we're going to take Brooke's poem and put it here. And we're going to save this as. Well, actually, this is maybe a little bit excessive. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to call this test three. That's going to be the spammy one with both channels. So you know what? Let's trim it. We don't need more than a minute. Okay. This is test three. And then test one is going to be just the music in one channel and silence in the other channel. How oh, it's why do you kill my undo when I save? That's the worst. Uh, why do programs think I'm an idiot? Okay, so we'll load test three again. And we'll do this. There we go. Photoshop's even worse. Photoshop doesn't let you control Z more than one item, which is completely useless. Like you have to go to the window as far as I can tell to, 
to go backward more than that, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right. So, should I program this into a level? No. What should I do? So let's make a command called music. Do I have a play sound? I have a sound, but that won't get rid of existing music tracks. So if we do this, if we call play music, it'll fade out other music. Here we go. So, okay, so you see, this is our test one. We know if I save that correctly that it's only one sound in one channel, but we're seeing it in both channels. And I think we're hearing it in both channels, right? So it's no surprise, the mixer is just mixing things together. Right, so test two is empty in the left channel. So we're getting the left channel in both output channels and nothing in the right channel, uh, or nothing from the right channel. If we do test three, we're only gonna hear this, okay. So that is what is going on. Um, now the thing is, the reason we have these different sound categories is because you wanna do different things during mixing with respect to them. So like a music track like this, you don't really ever wanna be spatialized. So, etc. cetera. Um, all right, well, well, now let's fix this. It's been all downhill since Photoshop 7. I think maybe even Photoshop 6, but yeah. Did Sam Harris's people really want too much money? No, it's Carl Sagan's people that you're thinking of. And yes, they wanted too much money. Um, time to switch to GIMP, lol. Lol. Yeah, they wanted too much money. So the thing is, when, here, here's a business thing. When you sign licensing deals like that to like use somebody's, uh, you know, their text, like we read from texts in there. So we have to get permission to do that and usually end up paying people to get permission. And often the deals that you sign with someone will say, well, we get paid at least as much as anybody else. And so you negotiate some amount. And then as long as the people who think they're the most important get paid that amount, that that's fine. But then if somebody else comes along after you've negotiated all these deals and says, no, we want eight times that much, then you would end up having to pay everybody eight times that much and you go broke. So we couldn't do it. That's why Carl Sagan is not in the witness.
I'm getting hungry. I'll be back in a second. I do not have a lot in the way of snacks right now. Well, generally the way that we determine what gets mixed into where is we call this update panning thing. And maybe we're not even calling this for all I know now. Maybe we are. Update stream. Okay. This must be getting called because this is the thing that decompresses the AUG file. So that's fine. So we're calling update panning. So the, the thing about Mixing is it's more complex than you might think because your source audio could have many channels. For example, in the witness We have a lot of like 5.1 channel source audio And then of course you could be mixing to like 7.1 output or, or stereo output or whatever So for every source you end up making a mapping from every source channel to every output channel right with a floating point so it's kind of like n squared between the number of source channels and the number of output channels. Which is annoying, but that's how it is. So update panning helper is the thing that determines what that should be for this frame. It's called panning, but it, you know, for music, you're not going to pan it around a space or anything, but, uh, you know, for music, you would just set those to whatever they need to be. And then down here, we just sort of determine if we're playing anything. Like if any of these coefficients are not zero, then we're actually playing audio this frame for this sound. If we're not playing audio this frame for this sound, then of course we can skip a lot of work. Okay. Uh, update panning helper. So really, uh, maybe this should also be music. 
like we didn't have music in the witness so we're not So this whole spatialization path, we're going to, we're going to have to deal with that at some point. Okay. Um, for locked outputs. So basically this is just some hard coded things where we say like, look, if we're outputting to stereo, there's a small number of things that could happen. If it's a mono source going to stereo, just put it halfway in each speaker, right? That's this point times 0.5. If it's stereo going to stereo, just put, you know, the left channel in left and the right channel in right. Um, otherwise, we actually do the regular or a simplified version of the regular panning, right? Um, okay. That might fix it, for all I know. Whoops, test one. There we go. That clearly is only coming out of the left speaker, both visually and auditorily. Okay, test two. <clears throat> These hearts were woven of human joys and cares washed marvelously with sorrow, swift to mirth. These hearts were woven of human joys and cares, washed marvelously with sorrow, swift to mirth. The years had given them kindness. Dawn was theirs, and sunset, and the colors of the earth. These had seen movement and heard music, known slumber and waking, loved, gone proudly friended, felt the quick stir of wonder, sat alone, touched flowers and furs and cheeks. All right. Well. So I guess the next thing is to make the sound mixer not punt when the output isn't stereo. Now the problem is maybe we can't really do that tonight because I don't think I have any test hardware. Will sound be positioned relative to character orientation or screen? Uh, for this game, I'm not completely sure. I think Positioning it relative to character orientation only is going to be very jarring. We might do some blend between those though, because you can switch characters and stuff and to have all the sound pop dramatically is kind of weird, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Did Andrew do all the audio implementation on The Witness? No, he did a lot of it, but people helped him out, who he hired, right? He sort of ran the audio for the, the project. How is the implementation like when you work with sound designers? You do it or they do it? Um, they did a really good job at learning how to use the game editor and setting sounds up in the game. So really, after an initial acclimation period, we were able to just communicate with them about sort of what the game needed, and then it became fire and forget, where they would just go do stuff. And for the most part, that worked great. So uh, you always want to do that in a game whenever possible. You want to enable people to get things done directly without having to you know, go through you for every little bit of busy work. What do I use for rendering? Uh, a computer. I use a computer to render.
Now you see, uh, we use OpenGL right now, but we probably won't when we ship the game. It's just there because it's what we're dealing with. Or am I going to come to the dark side and use JSON instead of text files? Never. What is my opinion on SFML? I ignore everything with ML in the name, honestly. So I have no opinion on SFML because I don't know what it is because I ignore everything with ML in the name. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Let's just start looking at what we do. I remember seeing the error message for Here we go. So, if we try to start up with more than two channels, we disabled that. Um and the reason is because I think I just didn't have array literals back when I ported this code and this code originally used array literals. And uh, I think now we do have sufficient array literals. We'll find out. Um, so there's this thing where you do panning by uh, figuring out which speakers a sound is between. You know, so uh, we're doing that here. It's maybe not the best way to do it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but let's just uh, do that. So we've got these speaker directions. Here we go. Yeah, we didn't, oh, oh no. We can't do literals of arrays of structs yet. Like we literally, we literally can't do that. Um, but that's fine. We're going to uh, initialize them So we're going to say oops Ugh, this is not C++ So we set up these different speaker configurations why is my num arcs hard? What? Oh. This is the default. Of course, we don't need num arcs really because
Like, you don't see in, in C++, I don't know. We don't need to actually declare these constants. We could actually say this dot count when we have an array literal, which we don't have yet. So, or an array of structs literal. Yeah, whatever, whatever, bro. Um, okay. Do we use num arcs at all? No. Like literally we don't care. Okay, that's great. So we know that our handler is only going to return a small number of things. We do stereo, we do mono, we do 5.1, we do 7.1. That Because you kind of need to know what the speakers are. So we know if it's one of those, then we know what it is. Otherwise, we don't know what it is, which is why we're only handling a small set of things here. What's the coolest thing I've done with very few SIMD instructions? I haven't done a lot of SIMD work in my life, actually. There have been short periods in which I do some, but uh, it's been a long time. Do I mentor anyone in programming or game development? Not directly. Um, maybe some people watch this stream and that's kind of like that, but no, I don't teach classes or anything. Um, okay. Okay. Well, we have to initialize these things. Um, like even this is sort of an abuse of C++ because we're not initializing this member in the, yeah, it's just, okay. All right. Um, Uh, Emacs, Emacs, Arcanits, because we don't have array of struct literals, we have to initialize these at runtime cleanup. All right, so we got to do this and we've got to do this. So this is basically just saying like, look, there's an arc between the center and the front left speaker. There's an arc between the front left and the rear left. There's one between the rear left and the rear right, etc. Again, I don't exactly know if this is the best way to do it. Um, maybe I should come up with a, a different way. I certainly feel like it's not the best way to do it. But it is what it is for now. Because the thing is, like we sort of use the arc for determining how much volume goes into a sound, but then everybody else gets a bass volume because you don't usually want any speakers to be at zero when you're spatializing. So maybe it would be a better model to, I don't know, do something more physically based. It's hard to say, it's hard to say. All right, uh, so dot Uh, we'll namespace this later. I was going to namespace it so that we don't have the annoying prefixes, but we'll do that later. Do that later. Okay. A channel. S well, something, right? So we're going to do something and then something, right? And then we're going to do that times five. One. Yeah. 
one, two, three, four, five, right? So we have center to front left, front left to rear left, rear left to rear right, rear right to front right, front right to center, whoops, and then zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Kabam! Now we do the same for eight channel. Ah, what just happened? Okay. Center to front left, front left to rear left, rear left to extend left, extend left to extend right, extend right. Totally should do something more physical for this, honestly. Okay. So, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> okay. So, I can't really test that right now for a few reasons. One being I don't have like 5.1 hardware here at home. Uh, the other being the game isn't really setting stuff up in a spatialized way. We could probably make a sound playing command to do that. We would have to see. Um, I think What do I do? Do I buy like a 5.1 sound bar for PC just to do this? Do, do people have a recommendation for what I should buy? So, let's get rid of this. strongly typed. Alright. Uh, it's better to do that than to return an index. Alright. We'll do the same thing for sound source enum. Oops.
target dir index. Turn all right. I like that I just used a return argument default value. That's a good feature, man. Okay. So some of these we're going to put a using, some of them, like if there's just two, I don't know, man, if there's just two, we just do it. Oh no. These are going to have similar names. Yeah, it's fine. We don't have that problem yet. Whoa. This is incorrect. Incorrect code that we found because we are So this is the, oh, never mind. Wait, this is, n is the number of source directions. So we're iterating over all the source directions and we're asking if we should skip that output channel. That's not right. So we need, uh, Fixed a bug we didn't even know we had. All right, uh, subwoofer. 
actually, and now I need to make a note. What was that called? Skip. Because the code that we ported this from that's going to be in C++ for the next game has this bug that we need to fix. Okay. For loops don't take enums as an argument, but I sort of feel like maybe they should. You know? Uh, that's not how you do that. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Why do we have so many things? Anyway. What am I even doing at this point? Skip this output channel. 542, right. Um, all right, who knows what just happened? Well, we apparently still have sound. Hey, look, we're not, you know, you can see the different waveforms in each side now that we're back to playing the regular music. We're not really doing anything intensely spatialized right now. So we're, like I said, we're going to have to do a 5.1 test at some point. That was not just a run directive. That was a run directive plus a procedure that does introspection on the enum, right? Because enum highest value is like calls enum range given info, which like takes the type info and iterates over all the members and gets the lowest and highest value, right? <laughs> so it takes, it's a run directive plus a baked constant argument plus metadata. This is, this is good action right here. Do we have interfaces? We don't right now. We're probably going to do something that's like interfaces, but different, but uh, that don't, don't have a runtime cost, um, but we don't do that yet. Uh, we do have polymorphics, right, which is essentially, you know, you can treat things as being duct typed a lot of the time. Um, Definitely worth testing on actual 5.1. I agree. 
Why don't I go on Amazon right now? I just want a really compact setup. Like I've had, I've had systems. that were a pain in the ass. Like, let me, let me look at some speaker bar systems here. Like these are not going to be the highest quality things, but they have the fewest components, right? So like, I mean, assuming that I can tell where the fricking sound is coming out from with the speaker bar, I just don't, want to maintain a thing with frickin' wires running everywhere. But all these are going to be garbage. Like a hundred and a hundred dollar 3d surround sound speaker bar. Come on, bro. That's gotta be trash, right? I don't know. Anyone have any recommendations along these lines? Why not 5.1 headphones? Because most 5.1 headphones are fake. They've got, they do just like fake signal processing. They're not real 5.1. There was at one point, let's do a search for it. There was at one point some 5.1 headphones that actually had six separate speakers for each ear. And I was going to buy those and then I didn't. And now nobody makes those anymore. Let's see. Like this kind of thing, it's not real. It's not real. Like I want to hear, if I'm testing stuff, I want to hear it come out of the actual speaker. Seven dot one discrete channels. These are weasel words. Let me just search for Logitech G430, how many speakers? Like it auto completed that question, so people must be asking this. How much do you want to bet this review doesn't actually tell me? how many freaking speakers there are in the thing because technology product reviews are garbage. Blah, 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 blah. Dude, this guy has no idea what he's reviewing. Anything Sonos or Bose. How do you mean for the speaker bar thing? Can you get wireless 5.1 for work from accumulator? I don't know. The best is probably Atmos soundbar. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I just, dude, technology product reviews are such trash and they have been for so many years. I just, I, Yeah, none of these are going to be real 5.1. They're all like doing some HRTF thing that doesn't work. 5.1 surround sound earbuds. I'm sure that totally works. God, just...
Sharkcon Dolby Surround Sound Gaming Headset. True 5.1. Eight speakers. There you go. That's what we want. Unfortunately, this headset was was just linked. Uh, it's only it's only like for the consoles. It's also only available used. Let's see. Let's see if we can find a new one. This is a different true five dot one than the other one that I knew about, but uh, not machine specific. Eight speakers. PC, Mac, other sources. USB connection, PC, optical input, analog. I guess we could plug it in analog or optical. This headset is from 2010. Yeah, see people, I think they stopped making these because they're expensive to make. And if people are gonna buy the crap fake 5.1 because it says 5.1 in the name, and those are cheaper to make, you might as well just make the crap fake 5.1s and sell people those. Yeah, like, are the drivers for this even going to work? It's from 2010. I don't know. I'm just not going to. Just not going to do it. CM Storm Sirius headset. Wait, what? That's a different thing. Currently unavailable. Yeah, nobody makes these anymore because people will buy whatever garbage and the reviewers won't tell them it's garbage because the reviewers don't know the difference between garbage and non-garbage. It's so bad. It's so bad. Oh, Razer Tiamat has five speakers per ear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is what we're talking about. This must be relatively new. I don't think this existed several years ago. Like, I was looking for one for the witness, and I couldn't find one. Ten discrete drivers, five in each ear cup. All right. I mean, Razer is very dicey. Sometimes Razer equipment is okay, and sometimes it just falls apart as soon as you plug it in. But we're gonna we're gonna buy one of these. Wait, let's read the reviews. One star. Let's see what people have to say. The bass is near non-existent and sounded terrible. I don't care about bass. I just care about testing 5.1. Also, when people complain about bass, they're probably used to devices that have horrible, like, bass boost by default drivers, which you don't want. Um, reproduced out of sync with each driver, making it impossible to tell where footsteps are coming from or gunshots. Reduce the center set of speakers volume till it was almost off. The bass, this guy says the bass is amazing with a proper sound card. People who say it has no bass because they're trying to use their $50 MOBO. What? Unless it's analog, the motherboard doesn't matter. Sound like absolute trash, horrible audio to the point it's hard to understand people talking. It, 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of Razer equipment is pretty bad. Let's see what the five star people have to say. Paid reviews. Anyone who says stylish, that's got to be a fake review. What is this? You need a good sound card. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. This sounds like a headache. Sounds like a headache. Now this one's also discontinued. Very sad. This is not at all what I want. This is just a random headphone. This is someone who came in the stream later. Do I have a dedicated sound card? No, because sound cards don't do anything. Other option from Asus. Well, the reviews don't seem so good on this one either, but let's see. Asus ROG Centurion. With USB control box, that's good. It's not analog, that's good. Probably means you need a driver, but that's fine. Oh, so many one stars. They're uncomfortable. The amp is large and the inputs are in goofy places that don't allow you to hide the cables. broken in less than a year. The mic is terrible. I don't need the mic. I just need it to test 
audio mixer software never worked. That doesn't sound good. Anytime someone mentions a different product, it's quite possibly a paid review. Let's just see though, what is that? Doesn't say true 7.1. But I closed the window accidentally. I don't know. Do I buy the crappy Asus ROG Centurion or the crappy Razer headset? I'm undecided. What do people think? Yeah, I just want a 5.1 or 7.1 test rig that's very portable. That's all I care about right now. Four speaker drivers in each ear cup. Teeth rattling bass. Terrible drivers. The audio will freeze your entire computer. Ah, software is so bad. Software is so bad. Well, I'm glad this turned into an Amazon purchase stream. I don't know which one of these to get. All of them sound bad. Just write a device that will visualize sound in 3D. Yeah. So for those people who just joined, we're not looking at any headphones. We're looking at True 5.1 or 7.1, which means it actually has enough physical speakers in the device to make the sound come from different directions, which is almost no headphones do that. Although people are finding some. Ear force. Used. Very good. I get somebody's earwax in my Ear Force headphones. Arrives in a week. So I guess these are probably discontinued also, which could be bad news for drivers and stuff. It's got better reviews, but oh yeah, this is back in the 2009-2010 time frame. Ah. Like the odds that that works well on Windows 10, I don't know. PCPartPicker.com. Is that like PCNosePicker.com? Choose headphones. It doesn't give me a category for true 5.1. So I can't really pick the part if I can't pick the part. Razer Tiamat, is that the one we were looking at a minute ago? Did I close that page?
Razor Overwatch Man of War Tournament Edition. Okay, this $100 one, there's no way that that's true 7.1. This one. Analog connection, yeah. I don't know, I'm getting tired of this. Why do you need to test in 5.1 or 7.1 headphones? It doesn't have to be headphones. It's just that headphones are the most compact test system. Like I don't, I don't want to run 5.1 or 7.1 sound most of the time. So if I have to set up all these speakers at home just to test some audio code, then that's annoying. But if you can put on actual headphones that have the physical speakers in them, that's less annoying. Yeah. Don't forget to get the upsampling right. Yeah. How exactly is putting more speakers right in front of your ears supposed to work? Well, the sound comes from different physical directions, which is what you're trying to emulate is sound coming from different directions. It's not quite the same, of course, but I, I really don't know. I'm just going to buy one of these. And it'll be bad, and I'll be very sad about my purchase. I don't know. This one will show up in two days. So. We're going to buy this one and then we're going to regret our purchasing decision later. That's the tactic. All right. Add to cart. No thanks on the PC peripheral protection plan. Proceed to checkout. Log in. Ship to my apartment. Put it on uh, the company card. Deliver Friday. Okay, so we will do a stream maybe Friday night where we start out with the intention to test our 5.1 system and then get very frustrated as we are unable to make the headphones work. And then we throw our computer out the window. Can you click with the eye tracker? You can turn on that option. The problem is there's just a little too much latency and it's a little too inaccurate. But with a future eye tracker, maybe it'll be good enough. Oh yeah, anything that I buy that's video game related is tax deductible. Are you kidding me? Come on. So is that everything we do tonight or do we try to do something else? Oh, um, let's rename these sound sources.
Let's call this source direct. Wait, did we check in? I think we did. No, we didn't. Um, okay. I'm going to call this source direction. Should declare these. Why do we have mono there twice? Okay, here we go. Language features if complete source index is equal to See, we don't want to using this because this uses a lot of the same names as these, so we're just going to say source direction dot whatever. Now, at some point, we might do a feature where either you can just say dot whatever, and we use the type of this thing to look up the namespace, and then we wouldn't need all this source direction. But that is a not yet implemented feature. Syntax for that might be slightly different.
Okay, that's a little neater, a little. Let's not forget this. Oh, actually, we don't want to. We don't want to using the source directions. We just got done saying that. Just got done saying that. The only reason we were doing it before was because we were redundantly had it in an enum with prefixes, and that was crazy. Did we say num source directions? Oh, and it's not. That's not. That's not in the enum. All right. That might be all the official audio work that we do today. Uh, and we'll just we'll just do some more um, when those headphones show up and we can intend to test the system. Someone's saying no need for assert false, you used complete. That is not true. So you would think that I don't need to do this because of this complete. Um, but that's only if the value that's passed in is actually a valid enum value, which it may or may not be. And you might, I mean, Maybe we should have a debug build mode that checks that enums are valid values, but I'm not sure about that because it's not necessarily cheap for the compiler to check that if they're not consecutive numbers, like enums could be arbitrary numbers, and then you go through a very expensive check all the time. I, I don't know. It might be a good thing, um, but you know, uh, so if this just came out of uninitialized memory or something, it might not be any of these values. And we still want to catch that case. Why the HRTF hate? I'm just not convinced it's any good. Um, certainly back in the day when we used software libraries to do HRTFs, they didn't really work. Um, maybe these days it's better. I don't actually know. Like, does it, has anyone used any of those HRTF headphones and can legitimately vouch for them? Uh, and do I trust that? Because lots of people vouch for things that are terrible. Lots of people say the MacBook trackpad is awesome. Maybe you could have complete automatically put an assert false at the bottom. Maybe. Yeah. It's, you know, it's something to think about, I think. For sure. Something to think about.
Yeah, maybe I should try the Atmos soundbar at some point. I mean, really, these headphones that I just ordered, I don't intend to use them for playing games or anything. It's literally just to test a 5.1 system in a convenient manner. Well, it's midnight and we did some work, so that's good. Um, Anyone have any questions before we sign off the stream? Should I have bought 7.1? Maybe, yeah. I mean, really, I want both, right, eventually. So we'll make 5.1 work, and then we'll buy a 7.1. And then we'll buy a 9.1, and then we'll buy an 11.1, and then we'll buy a 15.1. Emacs has MetaX align, yes, but does it understand this programming language? Probably not. I don't know. I don't want to touch it. Quantum computing and or AI for gaming, yes, both. Am I considering quitting Twitter? Yes. Yes, Twitter is such a pain in the butt. How's Witness 5 coming along? We have to finish Witness 7 first. Would it be easier to test with well separated 5.1 speakers? Probably, yeah. I just wanted to try this kind of headphone because I never have. So I want to see how good they are. If like I can't really tell where the sound is coming from, then we'll get a more separated system. Is it worth it to write your own renderer? It depends on what your goals are. What are your goals? Yeah, and it's true. As Long Boolean says, all said and done, you are testing some consumer hardware that may be in the wild. That is true. What do you mean for me? You said you're using OpenGL. What? What do you mean by write your own renderer then? I don't understand the question. I don't understand the question. Thoughts on Vulcan. I have ranted on Vulcan several times lately. I don't want to rant again. Don't want to rant again. I don't want to rant again. Too much ranting. You know what? Let's let's lighten it up a little. Let's get rid of some of these braces. I mean, we should test that again because you should always test, but come on, that works. Well, we, we're not even outputting the, yeah. We don't even have input sounds with sources with channels from here, so we didn't really test it, but whatever. Do I go through emails and try out random stuff? Sometimes, but not very often. I just have so much to do. You might change from OpenGL to something else. Do I think that would be a custom renderer or what? I mean, it's probably a backend that uses the native API of whatever platform we're shipping on. 
But I heard that Ready at Dawn are migrating to Rust. Yes, I heard that. How many games am I working on right now? Too many. How many of them will get released? Eventually, hopefully, all of them. How do I feel about DirectX? Uh, I haven't paid very much direct much attention to DirectX since DirectX 9. I thought DirectX 9 was good for the time. Um, I've never tried to use DirectX 12. I don't have an opinion on it. Do I depend on potential success of Silicon? What if nobody buys it? If nobody buys it, then we're still in business, but in a more uncomfortable position. When will I stop making puzzle games? I don't know. Not today, apparently. Have I seen David Brevik's new game? I don't know who that is, so no. Am I the CEO? Uh, my title is president, but yeah. Do you think you'll eventually settle on some sort of base engine that you end up reusing, iterating on? I hope so. It's a lot of work to build everything from scratch. I don't want to do it too many more times. Any advice on how to get into those positions? You're a creative director with some C++ and C experience. Um, I mean, you just got to apply to places and you got to show them that you know what you're doing. I mean, have you actually held the title of creative director at a game company before? Or are you calling yourself that? Like, are you an aspiring creative director or have you actually held that role? Cause there's a big difference between those two things. What game engine? Uh, this is a custom game engine. This is not anything that you've heard of. How did you go about designing the puzzles in The Witness? Um, there's an interview, maybe the interview with Adam Conover talks about that. I don't know. So there's this interview, which uh, probably we might talk about that a little bit. I don't know. There's probably some other places where we talk about it. Oh, CS, computer scientist. I see. S and D keys are right next to each other. Uh, well... Yeah, it's same advice though. I mean, you want to show that you can do the job competently. That's really all people want. There's a shortage of people who are really able to do the job. So um, if you show that you can do it, people will want to hire you. Uh, how do you show that? Well, you know, just having projects that you've worked on is one good way to do that. I don't really know. Besides that, and having worked other places successfully, I'm not sure. Do I think most industry will start shifting from OOP to more ECS-focused architecture? Well, I don't use ECS types of architectures, so I don't vouch for that. Um, but I do think object-oriented has peaked and fewer people are using it now, yes. Oh, you don't think the Conover interview includes that. Okay, well, it's hard for me to say. I know I've talked about puzzle design somewhere at length. I just don't remember where. 
you only some people think my philosophy can only be achieved through puzzle games. Those people are not thinking hard enough about it. Uh, I have designed games besides puzzle games with this philosophy. They're good games. None of them are released yet. And probably won't be anytime soon because we decided to do a puzzle game here. But at some point you will see puzzle games, non-puzzle games from me that use the same design ideas. Yes. How many lines of code are we maintaining currently? Um, for the Sokoban game and the compiler, it's about, uh, if you don't count blanks and new lines, um, it's about 80,000. And then um, for the, we're not really actively maintaining the witness anymore, so I'm not going to count that. Um, for other projects that I can't say what they are right now, probably another 180,000 lines. So it's 250,000 lines of code, maybe total, something like that. It's a lot. But not that much. It's not Google's one billion lines of code that we tweeted about the other day. Someone is saying, you think it was here? Uh, oh, yeah. In this one, in the Calvino talk, I definitely say some things about puzzle design. This is not the one I was thinking of, but... Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a link of this... The one, the one on my channel, didn't we post this? Did we never post? Uh, da, da, da. Well, there's apparently multiple postings of this from the same place. Um, I have a version of this video that we haven't posted yet. I guess. Anyway. I mentioned some on tone control. Yeah, that could be the tone control podcast from a long time ago. We could be talking about puzzle design on that. Coming to reboot develop next year. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe it'll be time to go back to Croatia. I just have to spend time somewhere besides Dubrovnik. Like that castle area of Dubrovnik is cool, but it's super touristy. So once you visit it once, you kind of, you kind of have done that. So I would have to visit some other areas. Do I go to Gamescom? Ugh, dude, I don't like Gamescom. I went there once, maybe even twice. It's large, sweaty, dark warehouses packed full of gamers. I just, eh. Please come to Zagreb if you decide to visit again. Yeah, I don't know. I got an invite to Romania in October, but um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to travel and give speeches right now. Might be visiting Prague. Any places you recommend touring? I just did really basic stuff around Prague, but I really enjoyed visiting it. Like just walking around, looking at the buildings and stuff is great. The little cinnamon cake dessert that they have there is great. Uh, in Romania, is it for dev play? I think that was it. I don't know. What about Tokyo Game Show? I've never been to Tokyo Game Show. Uh, Tokyo Game Show is probably a little too mainstream and large for me. Um, I don't know.
The only thing I would say about Prague is it's not really the, the place west of the river, which is kind of like where the where the palace is and whatever like that that part of town sucks like don't go over there <laughs> but if you stay like in the here let's pull up a map okay so i didn't go to a lot of prague right so let's just say that. But um, so all, all this old town stuff is fun. This is the best tea place in the world that I know of. So go there. Um, this stuff over here sucks. Don't go over here west of the river. That's all stupid. Um, I didn't go to this park. That might be good. But everything I like walked all along here. It's really just not a good part of town. Maybe this is good. I didn't go over here. Um, I didn't go up here. Uh, I just, I was around here a lot. I was around here. Um, but yeah, I didn't go very far out. I didn't go down to anything down here or over here. I missed all sorts of things. It's just like often when I travel, I'm just preparing my speech for a long time. And I don't have that much time to hang out. Uh, and then I finally do and whatever, but, um, oh, the, so this stuff over here sucks, but whichever, I think this is the really good bridge. You want to go to that, the bridge with all the statues along it. I think it's that one. The famous, the famous Prague Bridge you definitely want to go to probably in the morning before it's packed full of tourists. Have I ever been to CPPCon? No. Have I ever been to Gen Con? No. Did I watch any Zach Tillman vids? No. I don't know him. Put that up for later. Okay. Although he's speaking at closure conferences, which maybe means I don't want to hear what he has to say, but whatever. Um, how often do I find myself getting sick of game programming and or the gaming industry? It seems like for the most part, you dislike what other companies are doing. So it surprises me you've had the energy to stay in that industry for so long. Um, I don't really that much feel like I'm part of the game industry. I'm just doing my own thing. It's not really connected to what anyone else is doing. And that's fine. <laughs> How did I like that? Um, it was good. It's a little small. We went up to Vienna one day and that was fun um, as well. We went to the chocolate factory. That was fun. Coming to Romania might be an interesting experience, but it mostly depends on what you're looking for when you're traveling in Bucharest or cool places. You want something more landscapey, you have to leave the city. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to go because I just, uh, I mean, that's like three months from now, so maybe it's fine, but I just don't feel like traveling a long way right now. I'm kind of tired right now. So we'll see. Do I distinguish between systems only puzzle games and more classic story based point and click puzzlers? I mean, what do you mean distinguish? I don't really like the classic story-based point-and-click puzzlers that much, so by that metric, I guess I distinguish. What do I think about potential shift to subscription-based gaming? I think it is likely to happen, and it's likely to put most game developers out of business. Very sad, but true.
What is my Emacs color scheme? It is some colors that I typed in. Have I thought of making a more programming puzzle style game like Zachtronics? Um, I've thought about it a little bit, but not seriously enough to design something. By the way, there's a new Zachtronics game coming out in a few weeks, if you haven't noticed that. Yeah, that chocolate factory, the Tzotter factory, is really fun to visit. The chocolate's not that good, I hate to say, because it's all like that, that place... It's all about putting weird flavors in the chocolate, and most of the weird flavors I don't really like. So, uh, but it's like the most interactive chocolate factory visit that I've ever seen, and it's fun, and you get good photographs out of it, and all that. More dog or cat person. I don't know. I can get along with both. Do I work for a studio? Yes. I work for a game studio. We live in a society. That is true. That is true. Well, it seems like it seems like we're out of questions. So it might be time to go if there aren't any final final questions. Next time when we get our headphones, we will uh, do some things. We, like I said, the game doesn't really play spatialized sounds right now. The first order of business will be to make sure that the sounds that we play are at least audible on the 5.1 and that we don't crash and all that. And then once that happens, you know, we can test maybe moving a sound around in space somehow. Did I ever find the right laptop? No, I bought a laptop for demo purposes that's sitting back here that I haven't even opened. And the reason I haven't even opened it is because it doesn't have trackpad buttons, so I don't want to use it for my own personal purposes, but uh, I'm going to use it to demo something on soon. Will I try playing Dota? I've tried playing Dota. I don't really like it. Uh, trying so hard to come up with a decent, meaningful question. Uh, maybe next stream. All right, thanks everybody for coming by. I will head out now and go to bed, but we'll do another stream, maybe Friday, maybe Saturday. Have a good evening. Let's find someone to host. Let's, that's a fun game to play. Let's find someone to host. Oh, let me leave. I don't want to close my chat, so. Shut off the autoplay. Who is doing game development? Well, there's us, gigantic developers, game dev chill. Is that like game dev and chill? Someone looking at Google Maps. Crypto Pals. Programming a game. Playing, is that GTA? What is that? Oh yeah, GTA. Okay, well this seems kind of dead. Maybe we look at programming. Wait, that's, that's a, 
that's a channel. Communities. Wow, programming is dead too. Holy cow, people. Look at all the programming. <laughs> Let's make a browser extension. User auth. The node. Nope, we don't host JavaScript. That's the rule. We don't host JavaScript ever. We can host Yolia. Okay, let's do that. Here we go. Actually, this could be really boring. <laughs> This person is not speaking because there's nobody to speak to. So I don't know. Do we host the weird Yolia stream and you can do some functional programming or do we host somebody else? Pear, wait, is Pear streaming? Pear's not streaming. Oh, he is. But like crypto pal, anything with the word crypto in it, I kind of don't. Pear, why are you working on crypto something? All right, let's host him. All right, we'll host Pear. Thanks everybody for stopping by. We'll uh, we'll see you later.